Peter Fisk is a business and innovation brand and marketing expert, author of six best-selling books and an experienced consultant. He founded and leads the Genius Works brand, a business innovation company working with business leaders to see things differently, to imagine, develop, and implement more inspired strategies for brands, innovation, and marketing. He started his career working at CERN in Switzerland as a nuclear scientist and later got the job he describes as the most amazing, managing the Concord Airline brand. Peter is also a passionate runner, running around 10 kilometers a day. Peter, how does it look like from a client side when a nuclear physicist is advising on business? Well, I guess it looks um, different. <laughs> so, sense. Well, I guess I, I started in nuclear physics because I'm fascinated about the world. I'm fascinated about how is the world changing around us and what makes the world like it is. So, understanding the world, understanding marketplaces and understanding how businesses can seize the opportunities to them is obviously incredibly important. But in reality, physics or science is just part of our thinking. It's the logical side of our thinking. It's the, the left brain, if you like, of our thinking. And you also need the right brain at the same time, the imagination and the intuition. So part of my challenge is to say, hey, I'm here as a scientist, but I'm here also here to inspire you. And it's that way in which we can both understand the detail and we can understand the big picture at the same time and how we can fuse those together to find new creative ideas, which I guess is important to clients. Where does this need come from? It comes from the world today. So if you think what about... What is the demand? The, the world today is such a complex place. I mean, not just in Bratislava or Slovakia, but the entire world is incredibly complicated. Nobody you can think of as average anymore. Are you average? Of course I you're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea about treating each customer differently, and if you're going to focus your effort on a certain group of customers, say in Slovakia, why not focus on the same group of customers throughout the world? So being able to understand the different types of customers, the different types of needs, the different types of marketplaces which they're in, and then understanding how businesses can address those opportunities is really quite a complex challenge, but it, the challenge at the same time is to make it simple so that companies can be successful in it. There are still some members of the generation who can remember the times, the old times, when, you know, it has a certain human touch to talk to the customer, to serve the customer. Absolutely. We knew what is the need on the other side. We knew the customer by name, by his or her habits. These times are gone. What is there to be remembered, like a kind of old lesson from the past that we can still use today and in the future? Well, I guess the old world is also the new world that we're still human beings and we still want to be treated as individuals and we still expect a personal level of service. And in some ways we went through a phase of automation where we treated everybody the same, but now we're back into a world with big data and with the ability to actually treat each individual in a much more personal way. But on top of that, is about the humanity of business. Business is still a human business. So whether you be a customer service organization where you serve the customer and you know that person's name and you can have a chat with them, or be it a digital online business, they still expect you to be human and to be able to talk to them in the real name, to understand who they are, to understand what their specific problems are. And you know, in some ways, we're more like that than ever. You know, we are more expecting that I am unique, I am individual in this world, and I have the power as a customer and as an individual. So if companies don't want to serve me in a personal, individual way, I'm not interested. Companies are obsessed with cost reduction. Oh, <laughs> cost cutting. Yeah, cost cutting, efficiency, trying to outperform their competitors by being a slightly cheaper or having a lower cost base mm -hmm. and the same price than, than everybody else. And it's a spiral which gradually goes down and down as you reduce your cost base to retain your profits. It, it reduces down to nothing. And companies cannot be successful by that. But so many companies try to win by being more efficient mm -hmm. than others. And they forget that you, know, you can change the game. 
you can, you can think about how can you innovate? How can you do more for somebody? How can you make your product special, premium, unique? How can you do something for people which is the most important thing in their lives so they're prepared to pay more for? And then it's not about a price reduction, cost reduction game anymore. It's about actually creating value for them, the customer, often in a perceived way, and for you as a business in a financial way. Do they get the message when you talk to stakeholders, owners, CEOs of companies? Do they listen? This is the way, guys, you might try it, and you're going to see the difference? Some do, some don't. But if you look at the, if you look at the high performance companies compared to the, the average performance companies, you know, not bad, but the average performance companies, the average performance companies are still trying to be efficient, they're still trying to optimize what they do to do it better, slightly better than last year, and, and they're incremental. And they're going to grow at, at the best at 5%. But the, the high performance companies, they, they're prepared to think differently. They're prepared to either stop doing things or they're prepared to start doing new things. They're prepared to change the way in which people perceive their products. Mm -hmm. And through that innovative thinking, not just about their products, but the whole business, they can create growth which is typically between 10 and 15%. And that's the opportunity. And as a business leader, you can either think, do you want to shrink your way to greatness, which isn't a very great greatness, or do you want to be truly great? in a changing world. It's about small companies doing interesting things in niche markets mm -hmm. who could you know, be as much in, 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 in Shanghai as they could be in Bratislava, as they could be in San Jose or they could be in Rio or somewhere else. And it's about those kind of stories. So companies like 23andMe, that's my favorite company at the moment. 23andMe. 23andMe yeah. for $99. <laughs> will tell you your entire DNA. Hmm. Now, by understanding the entire DNA of your body, you can understand your future, your, your future health risks and opportunities. So you might, because of that, you might change your diet. You might look at certain types of medication, or you might certain, live certain ways. You might make different choices about where you live, or about your children, or who you marry. You might understand your ancestors better in terms of where you come from and what makes you who you are. And for $99, we can take the world's most advanced science now mm. and it can change your life. Wow. And that's a small company with less than 100 people doing phenomenal stuff. It's how you think. It's not how big you are. It's how you think and the ideas which you have which matter. And it doesn't matter where you're coming from, right? Absolutely not. So if you think of a company like Li Yin Fung, they're a phenomenal company. They come from, they come from Hong Kong originally, and they used to make low-cost uh, clothing. But then the, the, the standard of living went up in Hong Kong, so they couldn't have low-cost anymore. So they created a virtual network of businesses. So if you want to make your own pair of jeans, say, for example, or jewelry, or whatever it might be, you have an idea. And you go to Li Yin Fung in one of their 300 offices, and then they'll help you. If you haven't got a lot of money, they'll help you find a, a venture capitalist to invest in it. And then they'll help you find a designer. The best designers for, say, clothing in the world today, they're in Buenos Aires. The best manufacturers for the clothing, both high quality and low cost, they're probably in Indonesia. The best web designers for your website, they're probably in Hyderabad in India. Then they might find the merchandisers, the distributors, they might even find you the back office to do your accounting and, and everything else. All you need to be successful in the business today is a great idea. The change makers you talk about, yeah. what did they have at the beginning? Really just a great idea? Well, they have a great idea, but they do have to have the confidence to be able to do something about it. To believe it. in it? To believe in it and to inspire other people to believe in it too. So an idea is only as good as the way you communicate it. Let me talk about the side of what you're getting by meeting and working with these kind of people. It's not what you give as a consultant, the service, the advice they're getting. Yeah. What are you getting from these kind wow, of relationships? Wow, I, I, I just love my job. And I love my job because I just meet such fascinating people with fantastic ideas. So, you know, today I'm sitting here in Bratislava. And you know, there was an amazing guy who I came across called Stefan Klein. 
Stefan Klein, who used to be a, a car designer for the Volkswagen Audi Group. And then he said, having done that job, I want to do something better. And now here in Bratislava, he's creating flying cars. And so the ability to drive down the road in your Volkswagen Beetle, but then when you get to the airport, for the, for the car to have suddenly to have wings, and for a propeller to start, and for the car then to take off, is not science fiction as in James Bond, yeah. it's the real world in Slovakia. And that's phenomenal. And I just love being able to meet people with such great ideas who have the passion, passion and the determination to make them happen. So how does the future look like when you, when you talk to these people? What should we expect? What kind of entrepreneurs will lead the world, the business world? Well, I, I, I guess it's, it's firstly it's people with ideas. We live in an ideas economy. It's not knowledge anymore. It's, it's knowledge which is fused with imagination. Yeah, so you have to have the, the knowledge of the world, you have to be able to make sense of the world, where's the different opportunities, but then you have to have imagination to create that idea within that world. And then you have to have the confidence to be able to go find the partners, be it for funding or be it for manufacturing, who can make those ideas happen. Mm -hmm. And, and the really interesting thing is that if you go back a hundred years to the industrial age, we had Henry Ford and he made great factories and he succeeded by having great factories where he made his own cars. Hundreds and hundreds of cars made the same way in his factory. But in today's world, we don't need to make things ourselves. We can find somebody else who can often make it better or cheaper. So we work through partnerships. We work through networks. And therefore, it's the ideas people who are the most successful, and then you find the other people who can make those ideas happen for you. So they're ideas companies, but they're also network companies. And geography does not matter in that world. Capability does not matter in that mm -hmm. world. Years of experience often does not matter in that world. <laughs> It's having the good idea and having the confidence and the perseverance to make that idea happen. And that defines the winners from the losers. Do you have children? I do. I have two wonderful girls. You have two girls. Yeah. What are their names? They're, one's called Anna and one's called Clara. So Clara and Anna, me as your daddy, if I should give you one advice for your future, what that would be? So I, I guess, you know, I, I often talk to them about, you know, the future and what to, what, to, what to study at school and how to develop yourself. You know, the most important thing is to be a rounded human being, you know, to love life, to enjoy life, to enjoy meeting people, to, be, to build lots of relationships with different types of people, to try different things, to be a rounded person. You know, I started off in the world of science and then I went into the world of marketing and branding and in a sense it's that yin-yang, that left brain, right brain, that, that diverse experience which is important. So it's the way in which you can combine sport and music and science and culture and technology and art, you know, all of these things They come can together. blend in. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's like a fusion of different things. And it's the ability to, to be comfortable with that. It's the ability to be comfortable with lots and lots of information. In the world, we have infinite information. We can read blogs and websites forever if we want to. It's how you can feel comfortable with knowing enough and also trusting your own judgment and intuition at the same time as having the facts. And so, you know, they live in a very different world. It's a very exciting world, but it requires a very different way of approaching it, not just at school or university, but also in life. <laughs>